is going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial in today's video we're going to be learning how to create a reusable ui table view controller so this is a controller where you can pass in data and it can create a table view um, like the one you see here and we can use the same controller over and over and pass in different data and it's capable of rendering it and we're also able to dynamically control what happens when you tap on a cell. So you don't have to hard code your implementations per screen. So for example, if we tap on either of these uh, cells, we get respective actions. And those actions are actually controlled by the first controller. So it's a super, super reusable pattern. It's very common across uh, industry apps and it helps you write less code and do more. So with that said, if you haven't done so already, smash that like button down below. Helps out the channel and video a lot. Subscribe if you're new, get Xcode ready, and let's get into it. So as per usual, we're gonna start by creating a new Xcode project. We'll stick with a single view application and we'll call this project my table view controller. Let's save it on our desktop and get into it. Let's expand our Xcode window a little bit. Give ourselves some more room to work. Pick our simulator of choice, which will be this one since I already have it open. Hit Command R to build and run. And you should see your empty app pop up like we just did. There it is. And let's start talking about what the heck a table view controller is and why you should care. So if you're not familiar, a basic table view is fairly easy to implement where you can come to your storyboard, come into your object library and drag in a UI table view and it totally works. But how would we create a reusable screen that can show a list of items? To do that, you can leverage a table view controller. A table view controller is a subclass of a UI view controller that's already outfitted with all of the properties and protocols, in other words, a delegate and data source, that you need to create a table view. So you don't need to actually drag anything in, it just works. And to create one, you simply need to right click and create a new file. And it's going to be a Coco Touch class that's a subclass of a UI table view controller. And let's call this my table view controller. Make sure it's in Swift and just save it. And you'll see that Xcode creates this file and you get a bunch of template code in here. But we're going to actually delete all of this because we're going to learn how to do it ourselves and implement it. So get rid of everything in that class. And let's take a look at this. We have our class name. It's a subclass of a UI table view controller. Notice there's no protocols up here. So there's no like UI table view data source that we are used to seeing. Now you can add them, but they would actually be redundant because this class that we are inheriting from already has those protocols. So we can simply implement our table view functions that are needed, which is number of rows will return a static number for now. And cell for row, for row at index path. And we'll basically create a cell every time instead of dequeuing it. We will adjust this to be the proper implementation in just a second. But just for the sake of everyone understanding, this is basically a full table view implementation right here. And if you can tell, it's far simpler than adding a table view on your storyboard and connecting an outlet and doing all that jazz. So how the heck do we use this? So what we're going to do for the purposes of this video is in the view controller file that Xcode has given us, we're going to create two IB action functions and we're going to add two buttons to this screen in the storyboard. And when we tap on either of them, we're going to show the table view controller. So the first one's going to be did tap button one and we're going to do the tap button two. Let's get rid of these empty line breaks. And in this function, we're going to say let VC equals my table view controller navigation controller dot push VC animated true. Let's copy and paste this into here. And if you're wondering where this navigation controller came in, uh, we're just using it here. We're going to actually change this controller in our storyboard to be embedded in a nav controller. 
So we're going to do that actually right now. So let's go to our main.storyboard. And let's do a couple things. Firstly, let's actually change the background color of this to black. Let's bring in two buttons by clicking this to get our library of options, of objects rather. And let's drag in one button. Copy and paste it to get your second button, like so. And let's also connect our uh, IV actions to the buttons. That's the first one. We want touch up inside, which is a normal tap. And we want the second one, which is also touch up inside. And finally, we want to embed this into a navigation controller. So select the controller, come up here to your toolbar, hit editor, embed in navigation controller, which gives us our title bar up here. And we'll just double click in here and give this a title of home. So let's hit command R to build and run, make sure everything's still compiling. And let's see what happens when we hit these buttons. So we hit it and we get this new controller pushed and we have a table view. And right now they're just all the same text. But if we go back and hit this one, same thing, we call basically the exact same code and we get a table view. So let's go adjust the table view setting to use a, a decued cell rather than creating a new table view cell in each cell for row. So if you recall, in this function, we just instantiated a new UI table view cell every time. The correct way to do this is to dequeue a cell. But before we do that, we need to register a cell. So we're going to override view did load, did load, and we're going to call super view did load on it. And this subclass already has a property of table view. We're just going to say register. We want to register a cell class. It'll be UI table view cell dot self for the identifier of cell. And in here we can say table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier cell. And it's going to be for index path. And let's see, the other thing we want to do is we're going to create a variable up here, which will be public called models. And it'll be an array of strings. So let's give it a type. And let's put some strings in here. Say like first, second, third, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me type. Hopefully my commas are correct. And in number of rows, we're just gonna return models.count. And instead of assigning this to a static string, we're going to say models and the string at that position, which is index path dot row. So let's hit command R and see what happens. So we hit one of these buttons. We get different things in our cells, albeit they do repeat because we were lazy and copy and pasted it. And the number of rows that we're getting is a number of things in this array. And we're not creating a new UI table view cell every time we're dequeuing it, which oftentimes actually isn't explained, but it's the process of reusing the prior cell, but just reconfiguring its elements. So it's implemented correctly, memory efficient, and just done properly. Now, you might be thinking, what the heck is the whole point of this exercise where I could have just implemented this table view the standard way that I do it by just dragging it in. So I'm going to show you that now and why this is important and powerful. So right now, both of these buttons show the same table view, but what if we wanted this table view controller to be reusable? In other words, we can pass in whatever data that we want in here, and this table view is capable of handling it. So we can go back to our first view controller, which is viewcontroller.swift, and in each of these, what we can do now is we can say vc.models, and we can pass in our own array. We can say like apples, oranges, if I can spell correctly, and grapes. Let's copy and paste this. And in this one, we're going to say, um, I don't know, let's go with car brands. I don't know, Honda, BMW, Nissan. Let's copy and paste this. 
hit Command R to build and run. Now, when we tap this first one, we get these elements. But if we tap this one, we get different elements. And the whole point that I'm trying to bring across is you don't necessarily need to create multiple controllers if you have different screens you want to show. You want to create screens that are capable of taking in data and showing basically and rendering that data into the screen, into the view. The other thing you might be asking is, okay, we can visualize as different data, but how do I have different actions get kicked off when you tap on one of these cells? Because that code, you might be thinking, lives in here, and that has to be static, right? Now it doesn't have to be static. So what we're going to say is this models array, instead of being an array of strings, it's going to be an array of tuples. And the first thing is going to be a string. And the second thing is going to be a function that returns void. And we are going to get rid of this jazz. And let's see, the number of rows won't change. But for this, we're going to say the text is models, the current thing, and the first element in the tuple, which is a string. And we're also going to override the function for did select row at index path. First, we're going to unhighlight that row by saying table view dot deselect at the index path with the animation. And we can actually call the function that was passed in here, which is models index path row dot one. And we can call it with a function call. And if you hit command B, you're actually going to get an error right now because this class is actually good. But if you go back to the view controller dot swift, this models array does not expect an array of strings, but rather what it expects now is as follows. So let me get rid of this and let's, let's do this. So it expects basically a string and a function. So if you hit command B, you should be building now successfully. So now I hit enter just to make it a little easier to read, but let's copy and paste this a few times. Second and third, and we'll leave the array up here empty because this, this example will hopefully help under help you understand how this works, but we're going to change the print statement to be uh, second, third, make this first. Hit command B. Looks like we have an error. Let's see what I messed up. This should be a comma. And hit command B one more time. Hit command R to build and run. And let's see what we get. So nothing's in this first um, array. So if we hit this, we should just get an empty table view. But if we hit this one, and let's say we hit one of these buttons, if you check out the console down here where we're printing, you can see that what we're printing is respective to each of these cells that I mistakenly just called the button. But if we hit either of these cells, we get the respective print statement from the function we're passing in. In other words, this controller, when you actually tap on a cell, it's deferring the actual action to the function passed into the model's array. Let's get rid of my antivirus pop-up. It's basically deferring that action to whatever we passed in. So the controller that's passing in the models is also responsible for handling what happens when the user taps on a cell. So hopefully that made sense. It's a little bit of a tricky concept to explain, but if you can tell, we have far less code and our storyboard actually doesn't have to bring in a table view. We can use this code uh, over and over again. It's highly flexible and reusable. And this is a very common pattern you'll see working on like professional code bases at companies like Microsoft and Facebook. And the reason is, is because you have to write code once and you can use it multiple times. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. I try to reply to every single comment. Leave a like if you haven't done so already. Subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you guys in the next video.